Yeah, I'll do a quick intro and then do y'all want to just circle around, do intros, and then I can jump in with um, like a background and story about Vela before we jump into like what's the latest happenings. Um, so I'm one of the co-founders of Vela. Um, we are a perpetual exchange operating an Arbitrum base, um, really priding ourselves on building a great product that has a great experience as well, not just a trading terminal with like short and long positions. Um, we've been building for the last about year and a half, two years now, um, deployed our beta um, early last year and then went to mainnet, our, our official launch on mainnet um, summer of last year. So uh, with that, I'll pass it to Avi and then John. Great. So active here in the discord you guys probably have seen me be annoying at some point um but i'm here on behalf of vela i just recently started uh working with them on partnerships and so i basically kind of negotiated a deal for the dojo uh, that's going to give users 20 percent off of trading fees and then it's also going to give them an additional 25 percent rebate in the escrowed Vela token. And we'll get kind of into the details of what that means uh, for users. Uh, and then as Group mentioned, we also have a giveaway of 1,250 escrowed Vela tokens. And two, uh, is it 250 pith, Dan? I think so, it's 250 or 300. Uh, <laughs> you'll have to check after the call, I guess. Our next Actually, it's 250, 50. I think. Yeah, yeah, 250 because yeah. cool. it was 500 split in two for the two AMAs. So um, we're going to do our best to pick the best questions. We may end up picking multiple winners. So please ask questions actively, whether it's in the chat or in voice. And then we'll pick a winner by the end. Uh, and then I think that's pretty much all I have to say, John, if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself. Yeah, I'm John Ray, and I've been working on and off with, with Vela for... Gosh, almost almost two years now, uh, a long time, and and one of the things that I'm working on is helping them craft marketing narratives, but also put together educational opportunities for our community and and figure out how we can make our community DeFi savvy and and trading savvy and and bring them up to speed with all of the latest and greatest strategies, tech, etc. And so one of the reasons that the partnership with DeFi Dojo is, is so interesting to us is that you guys obviously have such a strong focus on on education and and really elevating your your community in that way and so we're excited to um kind of meld on on that to some degree and and i think you know i also have been hosting a lot of amas for for vela and, and so one of the questions that we didn't get to ask last time that i think would be great for us to cover today is just kind of what the vision for the partnership between Vela and, and DeFi Dojo is and, and how that ties into that educational mission that, that Vela has. So Dan, I don't know if you want to speak a little bit to that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so before we jump into that, and I, I think the the agenda for today's call is a quick coverage of like Vela and its platform features, how we differentiate ourselves, what's coming up in the future, but also um, I think Avi, um, you and John are going to walk through the platform and showcase some of the flagship features that are currently in play right now. Um, yeah. So it's kind of an exciting and different format from the Monday AMA with the general dojo. Um, Steven actually interviewed us during our beta last year, and that was kind of our first interaction. Um, I, I thought Steven was like a super sharp dude. Obviously, he has a good rep in the community. Um and though, so we've always been looking for partners that have like the ethos that we do, which is like do the right thing, um, you know, make the community happy, work with them really closely, um, and then provide value in terms of like informational resourcing rather than just like shilling a token, right? Um, so I think that segues well into kind of our history. Um, you know, my background's been in uh, strategy consulting and product management slash strategy. Um, really in the consulting world. So working for boutique firms, um, working for large, super large firms like BCG, um, really for the Web2 space though, not specifically Web3 until like 2018. So in 2017, I got into DeFi, um, started at BCG around the same time, ended up working on a team um, that included my current co-founder, <coughs> Travis, and 
we kind of found out about each, each other's interests just by chance, like seeing each other with like charts up on our screens and stuff in the middle of the night when we're working on a big project. And we're like, dude, what are you doing? Um, ended up building some stuff in the background, um, starting with the wallet, contributing to some bridge projects. And then we're like, dude, we should start something together. Like we gel really well in the Web2 world. Um, we have the teamwork, like the, the kind of synergy that you would find as co-founders. Um, ended up raising a seed round for an OTC trading product called Dexpools. And God, it's been so long. I think like early or late 2021, um, left our day jobs and uh, went to run Dexpools, built it from the ground up and deployed it. Quickly found out with product market fit and the <coughs> timing of the market, we literally launched in like the beginning of the bear one, like Celsius and all these like other Terra Luna, everything started collapsing that, uh, you know, OTC markets for retail are not um, Delta neutral and they are very dependent on new ICOs, right? <laughs> you know, the OTC market for retail, it's like you are looking for the latest tokens pre-launch or you're looking to sell tokens as a founder most of the time or team or early investor into illiquid markets. So there's like nothing launched. We're like, oh crap, let's, let's think about pivoting guys. Um, at that time, perp dexes or synthetic perp dexes really began to come up because of the speed of L2s and the performance of L2s. Previously on like Ethereum, it was just impossible to run a perp dex that was synthetic. Like you would just get front run, you would not be able to execute on your trades quick enough. Um, but L2s like Arbitrum, Avalanche started to showcase the power of how L2s can equip um, real trading that you would kind of experience in TradFi, right? So started building something, looked at a lot of the competitions, like we could do better, especially on the experience side and the capability side. So a lot of the competition back there couldn't do things like set up multiple triggers for an order, which was to us like, what? You can't set two take profits and then set a stop loss in the same like asset that you're longing on? That's crazy to me. So we started to break apart the, uh, apart the problem sets, work with traders, and we built a pretty good product. Um, just for MVP, went into an alpha in late 2022, and then went into a beta in early 2023. And that's kind of where our name kind of came out. People were like super excited. And the narrative of us, of us being like a GMX killer started going around crypto Twitter. Um, at one point, I think we pulled in like 10 to 15% of network traffic for Arbitrum. And so made our name, was really thrilled by the beta and like a little bit shocked about how much attention we got. Uh, unfortunately, had to close beta a little bit early and it was due to a small calculation error that happened when you withdrew from the liquidity pool and so our auditor didn't catch it we didn't catch it we had a team of like two or three devs two and a half devs at that time um and we're like crap if this continues right and people continue withdrawing like that <clears throat> difference between <throat> deposit amount and withdrawal amount would be insane so ended up pausing the beta and essentially refunding all the vault back to liquidity providers and traders <clears throat> Um, there was something like two mil missing, and we ended up paying back all of that with the fees that we gathered throughout the beta plus more. So I think we paid like an extra 20K from our treasury just to make sure people at least got back their initial deposit. So huge lessons from that, right? Um, number one, like even though you have an auditor, doesn't mean like you shouldn't do like a triple quadruple check across the range. Um, the second thing is um, immutable slash... Um, upgradable contra uh, contracts became kind of a big thing around then too. So we have some things that are immutable, others are upgradable. If we were able to upgrade that contract, it would have been no problem. But um, everything was immutable during that time period. So we had to do the right thing and shut down. Um, killed it on the mainnet launch again. So um, in summer, we launched on Arbitrum mainnet and on base right afterwards. Uh, made a ton of upgrades across the um, platform and introduced um, several things like one-click trading, um, multi-asset deposit, things that you actually see a lot of other exchanges do now, but like we were ahead of the curve for a lot of these features. Um, so we've been building like progressively towards a more mature product uh, for the last like two, three quarters now. Recently got a huge STIP um, short-term incentives um, program grant from Arbitrum's DAO for a million ARB. And that's being used for a few things, including what we call the Grand Prix, which is a huge trading competition that mix, mixes in some gamified elements that you would find in like the gaming industry. So that includes things like, you know, black market deals where all of a sudden if you trade a specific asset, you can get what more what we call credits 
that qualify you for a leaderboard um, in the top 100 every two weeks essentially gets a huge kind of arb reward for for winning um obvi is going to show you some of that it's like a super cool feature nobody else has it i've always felt that the power of web3 is a community and like the social aspect combine that with perp dexes and i think you have a winning formula in a lot of ways so this is something that we're probably going to continue for many many months um in different formats um the future is super bright i'll share a bit about that but we have a v2 rolling out next quarter and that's going to bring in some really really interesting plays so we're adding in cross margin trading so if any of you guys have ever felt like hey i wish i could click a little toggle and if i'm about to get liquidated or i need to add collateral i can just draw from my account um, that's something being added um, we're making our lp vault even more secure with a few more insurance features and um ways that you can kind of control your leverage so we'll be releasing a white paper soon on like all the different features that are coming out um but I, I think what gets us excited is V2 is just the beginning. There's a big vision we have to connect the dots and be one of the first really robust multi or cross-chain synthetic asset um, LPs. So we've already started some development on that. Probably going to be something for later this year. But um, we're in talks to move multi-chain um, across several networks that are EVM compatible. A few that aren't, that are really interested in bringing us on board as well. Our problem is we don't want to fragment liquidity, so this has become, become a necessity for us to think of a solution to connect the dots between all of that. Um, but I'll stop talking. I'll let Avi kind of take over and show you guys some stuff instead of just uh, telling about it. And then uh, we'll jump into Q&A, and I'm sure you guys probably have a lot of questions about like what's happening now, what's happening later, and what the big vision is. Thanks, Dan. I think um, great overview. Before we kind of dive in, I wanted to kind of open the floor to either Groot or to anyone else. If you guys had any questions, I know Dan kind of um, gave like a pretty comprehensive overview. So if there's anything that was either not clear or anything people want a clarification on, we can we can address that real quick. Otherwise, I can keep going. I think it'd be cool to just kind of see like walking through a trade like maybe kind of showcasing where where credits come into play and what that looks like and then we can get into some more questions cool hey Groot, were you gonna say something no, no i was just saying, saying that was pretty pretty, pretty good, good overview good. and uh let's, let's see, see what, what this thing looks, looks like. like sweet so um first things first uh when you come into the trading interface uh you'll see up here on the left hand side kind of what round of the grand prix we're in so this is round three. Uh, every two weeks, we've got a new round. And if you wanted to kind of view what the black market deals were before you placed a trade, you can just hover here. And you'll see that right now there's a deal where if you trade either euros or ETH, you're going to get kind of a multiplier on your points. Um, and so let's go ahead, get our drop down, click on ETH. We want to get some multiplier points. Now, I'm a horrible trader. So I'm going to take some suggestions from the crowd. What should we be doing here? Should we be shorting? Should we be longing? What kind of leverage should we want to use? Who's going to who's gonna tell me how to win some money? Because I need some help. <laughs> Whatever I say, just do the opposite. A hundred percent short. <clears throat> All right. So we've got, we've got some people asking for shorts. I mean, I don't know. It looks pretty toppy to me. Fuck it. We'll do it. So we'll go <laughs> and place a trade. I won't be super degen. We'll do 75. Let's see. What's my liquidation price? So an $80 difference. I, I really just want to get liquidated on on screen. All right, All right listen. If you're going to short, short something, something oh, you, you want to get, get liquidated? liquidated? <laughs> well, I want the potential to be liquidated. But, you know, right, if you're gonna the short idea would be to make some money. Least. <laughs> Solana, you want 100, Solana 100x right now. Solana 100x. I mean, it doesn't look it doesn't look great. This might be the better move. All right, let's go for it. And if I lose money, it's Dan's fault. Um, <clears throat> so the cool thing about this is, yeah, you can either use the sliders or the pre-populated buttons. Um, and then the other thing that, that I think Dan mentioned earlier, you can actually set your take profit and stop losses. Um, I'm not going to set a stop loss because I'm a DGen. 
Um, but my take profit, let's just say I want this to trigger at, I don't know, 111. So I'll put that in there. You can also say kind of like, oh, if you want to make 5% or whatever, you you just click on one of these numbers. So we can just leave it there. Um, let's actually do that. I would, I would actually, actually long this, this to 114.30 right now. Oh, my God. But... <laughs> Got an armchair armchair trader over here. <clears throat> All right, we're longing to one fourteen point three. So um, the other thing is down here, you can actually see the position size. Um, it'll tell you how many solar you're going to be longing, what your liquidation is. It'll give you your fees if you're going to get a discount. So. The ES Vela token that I was talking about, we're going to be giving away. Um, there is like a discount structure. And so before I place this trade, I'll just show you guys that real quick. Um, I think it's going to be under this page. So right here, um, it'll show you what the discounts are. So if you have staked Vela, which you'd have to stake here, so you can't just hold it in your wallet, it needs to be staked. Or if you have ES Vela, uh, which could just be held in your wallet, um, or do you have to actually stake it, Dan? Does that have to be staked here as well? Uh, you're going to have to stake it in order to get the discount if that's a question. Yeah, for ES Vela, right? Correct. Okay, so you got to either stake the Vela or ES Vela, and then it'll add up your balance. Uh, and then if you surpass one of these thresholds, your discount will be applied, and you'll see it actually in the UI. Uh, so because this wallet doesn't hold any of those tokens, um, I don't see anything displayed here in this fee discount section. Um, and then, Dan, another question for you. If they have a referral discount from the dojo, will they see their discount displayed there? Their discount will be on their account page. So you actually have Got to it. go to your account. Yeah. It'll tell you like. So if I go to account, um, where will it like show fee me? discount or rebate. Yeah, the oh, rebate right is where you'll see that percentage. Got it. So if you go the language the is account. like not the best. In fact, we're about to change the UI so it's a little bit more clear for you guys. Uh, but that came as part of like feedback from some, I think, Groot or Dojo members. Um, so appreciate you guys for giving that feedback. Yeah, yeah. So basically, you'll see it there, and then this fee discount that you see here will be based on your Vela, your staked Vela, and staked ES Vela. Um, so let's go back here. We're going to do, let's say, 50%, 100x. Your, Your entry is not as good now. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad. So we're going to long this thing, and it's going to cost $9 for the open fees, and then we'll also see a spread down here. So when you pop this thing up, um, you'll see more details. You'll see the mark price. You'll see the estimated execution price based on the spread. Uh, and then again, your discount. You can also customize your slippage here if you're worried about volatility in the market. I'm going to confirm the long. And what you'll notice is I actually didn't have to approve any transactions or anything like that because I'm using what's called a one click trading wallet. Um, I actually enabled this right before the call. So if I was in my hey, standard Evan. wallet and I was trying to long something, which unfortunately I can't right a, now because there's no balance stream. here. Um, I'd have to approve a transaction like every single time. Uh, and so what you can do is enable and fund this one-click trading wallet and basically treat this as a centralized exchange. You click around, do your trades. You don't have to approve any transactions. Super convenient if you're just trying to act quickly. And as you can tell, I'm already getting wrecked, uh, which is not surprising. Um, but uh, <laughs> that is how easy it is to place a trade. If you want to cancel... Um, there's going to be, you know, ways to close here. You can close 100%, half the position, 25%. Again, slippage is here. It'll show you um, how much uh, in fees that you paid. It'll show you your um, estimated uh, position uh, close. I think the other thing that's really nice up here, actually, is it'll show you uh, a sum of your um, unrealized PNL, the realized PNL, and also the fees. So this is something a lot of platforms actually don't show you, which is like what that final amount's going to be um, after all the fees are taken into account. So I really like that this is like super accurate and displayed right here for you to see. Um, 
So we're not going to close that. We're just going to let it run its course during the course of the AMA, and we'll come back to it and see how it's doing a little bit. Uh, but that is open positions. And then if you have orders that are limit orders that you've placed, they'll show up here. Uh, and then anything that you've closed will show here. And then all of your trading activity will be displayed here. Um, so that is placing a trade. Uh, the other thing that some of you may care about is the open interest. So you'll see the long open interest here, as well as the short open interest, the funding rate. So if this is positive, um, then the longs are paying the shorts. And then you also have borrow rates listed here as well for your positions, but depending on whether you're long or short. Um, actually, I've never pressed this button before. So this is cool. So you can move the panel from left to right. Uh, and then the other thing, uh, as far as events go, oh, this is the uh, black market deal panel. So you can either hide that there or you can exit out there. It's up to you. Um, and then quick order placement. Dan, you want to talk about this? I've actually never used this feature before. Yeah, it's for folks that want to like trade off the chart, right? So there's a lot of chart, chart trading features um, for users that are used to that, um, but totally optional. It's a pretty powerful tool if you want to do it. Cool. Uh, and then enable, save, and load TA. So for anyone who wants to uh, you know, do some technical analysis, use some indicators, and have it all saved, you can save and load from here, which I think is quite nice. Um, but yeah, that's uh, place in trades. And then as you'll see up here, I've got some credits that I've now accrued for placing a trade. Um, and so you can keep track of how much you've earned during the whole season, and then you can see how many I've earned in this actual round. And then you can also see my rank. So I'm actually ranked 169th right now. Um, if I want to go see the leaderboard, you can see how many credits other people have, and you can see how many rewards they're getting. The other really cool thing about Vela is that it's pretty like community focused. So you can actually click on this person's account. You can see what their total PNL is. And you can also see what their total volume is. And then if you really wanted to like kind of dig deeper and see more analytics on this wallet, you could see it um, by just clicking on more details and then kind of picking whatever time frame you're wanting to look at. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. So if you make it into the top 100, you'll be earning, you know, a few extra ARB uh, on top of, you know, whatever profits you've made from your trades uh, or losses if your name's Avi. But uh, right here, it'll show you exactly where you stand and how close you are to getting into the top 100. Nice. And then if... and the... I was just going to re reiterate that the, that the top 100 is based on credits. So the credits that you're earning for these various things, but you're about to go into it. So <clears throat> I'm, I'll cut you off. Go ahead. Did uh, Groot, did you have a question? No, no I just was, was just, just going to comment that it's, it's, it's nice. nice. I, I like the interface and, and um, the, the amount of tokens, tokens available is really, really, really great in there. When I was looking, there's, there's also Forex, which, which is, is really cool. cool. Um, I don't know if I've seen a decentralized exchange with Forex. Um, I, mean, I haven't used all of them, but I don't, the ones I've seen don't have that. So <clears throat> it's definitely real, real nice. And I like the idea that you, you don't have to approve transactions um, for everything that you do, which is really nice as well. Yeah, it's yeah, actually it's a powerful as, feature. I was going to say, as Dan mentioned before, it's funny because I think GMX just enabled that like a month ago or like early January. So I, as far as like teams go and people who innovate, like when you have like bigger players like that adopting features, to me, it just shows that the Vela team is like not only taking feedback from the community, but if they're going to be kind of creating these features and other big people are going to be adopting them, then this is the team that I kind of want to bet on to innovate on these platforms. Um, so I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, but beyond that, uh, I did want to quickly just mention, if you want to see how the credit system works, you come to this page uh, and then you can, uh, sorry, that's the, uh, so you can come here to round three credit system. You can see, you know, you get 10% of the credits that your referee earns if you refer someone. Uh, and then the other thing is that if you mint VLP, which we'll talk about in a bit, you get some credits for that. And then uh, if you have a positive PNL, you get the most credits there. 
and then uh, trading either Bitcoin or ETH, you get two credits for each dollar. And this is all based on volumes. And you've got this um, new feature that's been added on as a result of round three. So every round has like a new feature added on to it. Uh, and so the round one feature was basically just like the, the point system here as you see it. Round two introduced this idea of black market deals, which is what you see here with the euro and the ETH volume. So every few hours, you'll see here in the next three hours and 30 minutes, you'll have a new black market deal that you can take advantage of. And so that kind of motivates people to come back and always stay in touch with the new deals that are going on. And then this other boost gives you an additional 50% of credits on top of whatever else you're earning if you purchase it with 20 Vela tokens. And so the Vela token right now, I think is trading for close to 61, 62 cents. And so you can basically buy this boost for like 12 bucks and then it can help you kind of solidify your position in the top 100 uh, so that you can earn some ARB. Another thing you can do is just check in here every day and you just get 2000 credits for doing that. Um, mm -hmm. So this should update shortly. Nice. nice. So, so 169, 169, huh? That's, that's you're you're, you're, you're kind of up there. there. How many how, how many liquidations, liquidations is that? <laughs> you, what, what um, we've seen so far is like it's <clears throat> easy to place in the top hundred in like the first couple of days, but it gets like yeah. super competitive towards like the last half of like the two week round, right? Because people are like, okay, I see the placements. This is how much like I need to like earn in order to beat this guy and like to get this much ARB and also like people start running calculations. So like the last few days is just madness. People like like losing money to get like ARB sometimes. I'm like, guys, like what are you doing? Like at least be a good trader, but you know, <laughs> degens will degen. Yeah. I, I was in like the, I think the top like 30 or something for the first week. And then by the last like two or three days, it was a very intense battle and I got bumped out of that. Um, so I, I will share my personal strategy with you guys towards the end of this call of like what I'm doing. Um, I'm not the greatest trader. I know some of you are. So I think, you know, these, these like black market deals present like really interesting opportunities to take advantage of your trading skills. Um, but I'm just a humble yield farmer. So, uh, if you think we've kind of covered enough of the trading UI, maybe we can talk about VLP a little bit. Okay. okay. All right. So the other thing that you can do on Vela is to mint VLP. And so the interesting thing about VLP is that, uh, it's a stable coin vault. So if I wanted to mint VLP, um, I can only use USDC, and it's the bridge version, uh, to do that right now. Um, I think there are plans in the future to potentially add other stable coins and kind of diversify this um, in in like uh, V2 and other, other versions of the platform. Uh, but for right now, uh, you need to make sure that you get USDC E. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come to my one-click trading wallet and... I think I may have to, is it under account where I can withdraw? Yeah, okay. So I'm gonna withdraw some USDC. So that's gonna be processing right now. And because it's in my one-click wallet, um, it automatically pays the fees for me. I don't have to approve any transactions. And so that is done. So now you can see my exchange balance is $41. I come back to the staking page. I say that I want to mint. My 100 is now there. Uh, and then I have to both approve and then mint. So now I actually have to um, use my wallets. <clears throat> oh, and I'm gonna need some ETH too, so I'm gonna have to go back here and... Uh, Draw some ETH. And while this is loading, the reason that, you know, if you're solely on the trading side, the reason that it's interesting to be 
purchasing and or minting the the vela and then staking it is obviously to get the discount on on the trading fees which we already showed in the ux kind of where that was um but also if you're trying to maintain your status in the top 100 minting vlp um gets you a decent amount of credits as well yeah I, i'd say that it's uh it's a good bonus on top of your trading, but it's pretty hard to make top 100 just minting the LP unless you're like Mr. Moneybags and super yield farmer and you've got a lot of cash sitting there. Yeah, it's it's uh, 25 points per dollar. Um, so, you know, it's, it's a nice boost, but as you saw before, like opening that single trade, I made like 15,000 points. And then doing this right now, I made like about 4,000 points or close to it. Um, so if you've minted, which I have, um, you can redeem it. Uh, just be aware there's going to be like a little mint and redeem fee. It's quite small, as you can tell. Um, but in order to start earning some of these rewards, uh, you need to stake it. So don't forget that step. So again, you've got to approve this. And then the second transaction will be um, a staking transaction. And then I'll kind of show you guys what the sources of yield are and why this is interesting right now. So my personal strategy has been to just uh, stake VLP. And um, I'll show you guys what the yields are currently looking like once this transaction has been processed. So that'll do its thing in the background. So the APR right now is pretty juicy and it's 33% yield in stables and then an additional 19.2% in ARB and a extra two percent in ES Vela. That's the escrowed token. So the STIP grant um, is allocating some ARB towards VLP staking to incentivize the growth of this pool. Uh, but this yield that you see for VLP from uh, USDCE is actually, you know, organic yield that's generated from liquidations, trading fees, and uh, any other fees that are kind of generated by the platform. And if you're really curious to see kind of how that fee flow works, if you go to the Vela docs, which uh, down here on the right hand corner, you can click this and it'll open it up for you. Um, you can actually go to platform mechanics and click on fees. It'll show you actually, is it? Um, it's somewhere else. It'll, actually, I think. it'll be in. Uh, there's a. Yeah, tokenomics and staking, both of them have like different sections that'll break down like how things ah, here uh, it is. flow. So this is the fee flow diagram. Uh, and so basically you'll see that liquidation, 90% of that goes to the VLP vault. Um, you're also exposed to trader PNLs, which we'll talk more about this. Uh, so if traders are winning overall, uh, money will leave VLP and go to their wallets. And if traders are losing overall, it'll leave their wallets and go to VLP. You've got the funding and borrow fees and the minting fees for VLP, 50% of that, again, goes towards this vault. And then the position fees, 90% of that. And um, so you'll see like quite a bit of fee accrual towards VLP. And if you're really curious to see how things are going, you can monitor everything. So if you come to stats, go to the analytics page. In addition to seeing like platform-wide, uh, analytics. The main thing that I always look at is this 24-hour realized PNL. If this number is positive for too long, then you would start to worry about, you know, toxic flows to VLP, which means that prices could go down. Um, and so, like, that's the number I'm always trying to like keep an eye on. But something else that I think is also important to keep an eye on is down here. Um, you'll see like the fee breakdown for the day. So the daily PNL here was like negative 33k. 13 of that came from liquidations and 20 of that came um, from realized losses from traders. So when you're coming here and looking at VLP, you'll notice that when there was kind of like these big spikes, uh, there was drawdowns on VLP. Uh, but because it was a stable vault that started at $1, the one thing that's pretty comforting is even though there was like a pretty decent sized drop here, it never really dropped too far below a dollar and it climbed steadily back up afterwards. And if you look at platforms like this over the long term, um, traders typically don't win for too long. And so these, you know, troughs right here actually represent really interesting opportunities to kind of mint into VLP. So that's kind of another thing that I've been keeping an eye out for. But the interesting thing that I wanted to kind of mention here is that since mid-January, so around this 
um, point in time, the team actually introduced and kind of stealth launched a mechanic to VLP that has been under development for a little while. Uh, and really what this upgrade was meant to do was to kind of serve as like a little bit of an insurance policy for people who are staking in VLP. So as I said before, you're directly exposed to trader PNLs if you're a liquidity provider to the platform. So you're giving them your stable coins so that traders can open long and short positions. And if traders start winning, that money comes out of that big pool that you're contributing to. And that as a VLP provisioner is not great, right? Because then your dollar value for VLP goes down. What this new mechanic does is it takes the fees that are supposed to go towards the protocol and actually shifts that number closer to zero in those moments where a lot of people are winning. So the protocol kind of eats that cost. And so it kind of provides like a buffer, like a protection mechanism for VLP. It's not going to be like a bulletproof solution to like zero drawdowns for VLP. But as you can see, there have been some little moments here where there were like positive spikes. Like this day was like $14,000 uh, net positive because the realized PNL exceeded um, the uh, liquidations. And if you go and look at the same day here on the 10th, it dropped down from you know 1.032 uh, to 1.028. So if that mechanism wasn't in place, we would have probably dropped down a little bit farther down into here. Um, and so this is something that's unique to Velo that I haven't seen any other platform do. I think it just kind of like speaks to their ethos of putting their liquidity providers and community first. And I think it's really cool. Um, and this is just kind of one of the innovations that I feel like you can expect from this team as we kind of move on. I, I'm, I would be surprised if this is like the only time VLP is innovated on. And I know that there have been some mentions behind the scenes of kind of future innovations that are really exciting that will further bol bolster this yield. Um, but I, I will kind of wait until the time is right to mention some of those things. Um, for now, I think knowing that this is live and has been doing really, really well is, is pretty exciting. And you can see that the VLP TVL has started to creep back up towards 10 million. So that's also really cool. Is there anything you wanted to add, Dan, that I didn't get to? Yeah, so I, I just want to expand on the insurance mechanism you talked about. Um, we have a lot of cool acronyms for it. The one I'm going to use right now is dynamic fee splits. So typically 50% of fees go back to the vault. Um, but we added a buffer mechanism that reads a target APR um, that we can set. Um, and it, the balance mechanism will give the vault um, up to 80 or even 90% if we set it that high of fees in order to balance things out. Um, so it, it really is like um, one layer of defense, right? Like the, you can't have one thing you rely on as a synthetic asset vault. There's many other things we're doing as well um, to make sure there's continuous use of the money and that like crazy events don't come and just destroy the vault, right? Um, another thing I can... Um, kind of leak is we will be integrating with a few prominent lending protocols. So anytime that OI is not being used aggressively, then there's an option to take some of that and add it into a lending protocol um, vault. So there's a lot of cool partnerships that are coming around the corner and we'll be announcing them, uh, but those will come in V2. The dynamic fee split is in its beta form. Um, it's been running on mainnet in some capacity for the last couple of weeks. So we'll likely be uh, rolling that out in a more official fashion um, as it passes more testing, but it's like passing by flying colors right now, which is awesome. Um, so lots more things. I saw someone mention like what other features are coming um, down the pipeline. Multi-asset VLP is also something for liquidity providers that's coming. Um, so that includes other staples that also includes um, BTC and ETH potentially. Um, we've been talking to some uh, of our supporting chains to add some native tokens. So WinARB, maybe. Um, really need to make sure that we use the right assets though. Um, so if you have any thoughts about that, feel free to share with us. We definitely have a lot of community members with strong opinions. Um, you can be one of them. We definitely will listen and work with you. Um, but yeah. 
I think one of the things that I hear often when it, when I'm just kind of tuning into the community is that really more than most protocols, Vela has a really tight feedback loop between the community and and the development team and and the product team, and so you know it's wildly valuable when people do have a hot take on something <clears throat> be, because then it forces clarity on that and and it allows the product to get get better and and i think a lot of the ux ui uh, you know things in in vela that that are different have come out of that feedback loop and and so it's one of the reasons that you know i think the partnership with DeFi dojo is, is interesting be because Obviously, there's a lot of seasoned people in here that that can bring that feedback, and and ultimately, it's a community project, right? And and so your feedback helps make it better. Yeah, I think one thing, as someone who like I, I I think the one thing I'm good at is finding good yield opportunities. Like genuinely suck at trading, but like yield farming, I feel very comfortable with, and. One thing I don't like about short-term yield programs is that it's like very much like like mercenary liquidity, all that kind of stuff. But the one thing that I think is different about the STIP incentives that Bella is putting to work is it's really just a way to just prove to users how it's a better platform. And then I think people genuinely will want to stay afterwards. And, and that's why I'm kind of like pretty gung-ho about it. And then before I kind of aped into the LP, I, I looked at this APR, which <laughs> says zero right now, but it's not. Okay, so 55%, right? And I was like, all right, well, I'm getting paid in 33% stables and 20% ARB. ARB is a volatile token. If the price of ARB is increasing, that yield obviously goes up as well. And so to me, I know that I can tolerate a certain degree of drawdown if I'm getting those types of returns. And I kind of modeled out different um, scenarios and the drawdown that I could tolerate was quite large given the fact that it's paying out so well. Um, obviously that requires to claim your rewards and sell them on a regular basis. Uh, and personally, I'm kind of bullish on ARB and just bullish on the market in general, even though I shorted Bitcoin like an idiot. Um, and so I am just hodling all of my rewards and letting them build up because I think that in the end, um, using my calculator, I can see like, oh, this displayed APR is like 55%, but if ARB pumps to $4, that's going to be an additional 20% yield. And, um, you know, that's a pretty profitable way to either DCA into ARB or just profit off of ARB um, volatility. So that's the big opportunity that I really like. And I think the good thing about Vela is it's got that kind of opportunity, whether it's trading or yield farming or both. Um, and then the other thing that I didn't mention that I just want to briefly talk on is the escrowed Vela rebates that we're giving out. We're giving out up to a quarter million of escrowed Vela to the dojo over the next 90 days. So depending on how much volume the dojo generates, that's a ton. And I mean, it's not all going to go to one person, but if it did, that would represent a 40% discount on fees in perpetuity. And that's just being given to you. Um, and so these are kind of some of the things that we negotiated to make this deal really sweet because we really want you guys to like use, break, like do whatever you can to like help us make Vela even better than it already is. Um, and I mean, it's it's incredible like watching them put into into effect like the the changes that I've recommended. Like I made some recommendations for the referral program and I'm pretty sure most of them are going to be live by like the end of next week. So this is exciting, and um, I think you guys have like a direct line with with the team uh, in order to make kind of like what you want to see come to fruition, come to fruition, you know, within a reasonable time scale. Nemja, mobile app, one day. It's one of the most annoying things to maintain between like two different OSs, and it's it's quite a feat. Uh, but our mobile experience is pretty good if you want to try it out. Um, just on the um, just on the browser side. Um, one thing I want to call out, Avi, is like our team from beta to now has grown pretty considerably. Um, we actually picked up two ex Coinbase folks. One is our lead UX guy, um, and the other is one of our uh, tech leads. So 
Um, a lot of incredible people have jumped in. Uh, I have to give a sh- shout out to our awesome partners too, like Astrobid. Um, they've been working with us from like day one to make sure we have APIs that support their trading bots. And um, that includes like Groot, you, your bots as well. Uh, we definitely support them and encourage you guys to try it. It's an opportunity to double dip as well. We're about to launch a 25K ARB incentive for anybody that has an Astrobit account and trades over like 100K in volume, which isn't super hard to do with Perpdexes. Um, so you can like stack reward, right? Rebate via the escrow Vela. You guys have a discount code. Um, there is the Astrobit incentive. So there's so many ways that you can get creative. And um, you guys are probably one of the parties that can benefit the most from STIP. Um, so that's that's it from my side. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions. You guys are awesome. Um, I see a lot of folks in here asking questions in the chat. Uh, feel free to unmute as well and like pop in and ask in person. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go back through and, and cover some of the questions that got answered in the chat, but just for the sake of the recording and, and to get some clarity, we can go through that. But if anybody wants to unmute and, and interrupt me, feel free to do that. One, one thing that I wanted to ask before we get into that is for the 80,000 ARB reward, we, it's being distributed in, in uh, round three to the top one, 100 people based on credits. But what's the distribution throughout those 100? Like how's number, actually, one wait, how's number one yeah, weighted versus number It, it hasn't changed since round one, so we've kept it consistent, okay. but you can kind of see the breakdown. Cool. So you can go back in there and see what the payout was. Cool. Exactly. Yeah, and you go go uh, in previous rounds too and check out like what people got. Got it. And their credits. All right. I see some familiar faces in here. So Intuitive Investor says, um, we spoke a little bit about this, but are there any other specific upcoming features or tools that are, that are planned or on the books? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is probably going to be cross-margin trading. Um, that's a big technical change on our side. Um, you have a, the ability to choose to use it or not. Um, I would say for the VLP side, the multi-asset minting and redeeming, and then also the integrations with like lending alts is pretty huge as well if you're an lp -er. Um There's a few other things that are coming down the pipeline in terms of insurance and other mechanisms that we'll be revealing in a light paper that is coming out soon. So keep an eye out for that as well. Right now, we're 100% focused on the Grand Prix, right? Like that thing is a beast itself. It's like an entire, entirely separate experience in a way. Um, it's like building a game within a DEX. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, it's cool. Nemja says, can I both long and short the same asset to receive credit? So you could do that, but the P&L is weighted more than volume, right? Sorry, the yeah. question, I'm, I'm trying to scroll and find it. What was the question? Yeah, uh, no, John's said, right. Can I both long, long and short the same asset to Oh, yeah, yeah, credit. yeah. So, so he's trying to get a delta neutral volume strategy going. Yeah, there's actually been complaints from other traders about that. They're like, you shouldn't allow people to do that. I'm like, I mean, some folks want to farm credits and they don't necessarily have a PL strategy that's as strong. We can balance things like it's almost like I said, it's a game. So there's definitely like a need to figure out what the nuances are to support like your users. But um, we've got arguments all over the place in terms of how we need to balance the next patch. And is P and L weighted more than volume though, right? If I remember. Well, it depends. If you like hit a home run and you, you can benefit from the volume bonus, plus there's a 25 like credit per P and L, like dollar P and L, I think 20. So you can benefit both ways, but I would say the current balancing is a little bit more favorable towards volume than like really solid like holds and, and trades swing trades cool and Nimbus hey dan says, I'm... go ahead i was actually gonna ask dan when's that astrobit um promo going for people that want to move in their bots we're trying to go live next monday actually uh, but i think the our partner right now astrobit they're still working through some qa stuff to make sure like the vela integration is 100 percent okay and good to go um so Monday for now, I think we'll get a progress check tomorrow. And Astrobit's going to be on the AMA on Twitter Tuesday, right? Um, I don't actually know if they're participating. I'll, I'll double check on that. But 
good call out, they should be there. Yeah. Um, Nim just says, I'm assuming if I want to set up a trading bot, you'd have to do that through one click wallet. And Double Hull said that that's what they did. Um, anything else that you would add to that, Dan? Yeah. Um, you should just be able to use uh, your normal <laughs> wallet, but they, we have an API <clears throat> set that you have to hook into <clears throat> and provide some keys to. So I, I think you can actually do it with either. Yeah. And Double Hull said it worked good for, good for them. Um, let's see. Nim just says, how often do new assets get added for trading? Yeah, let me... So it, it depends. Sometimes we'll add a ton of assets if we find them inter interesting and they pass like due diligence and um, which includes like, is the assets safe? Like what's the, how centralized is uh, the token holder base? Things like that. Um, but really it's driven by like, what is the community finding interesting and like what are traders overall like trading, right? So... Um, yeah, it's very, 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 like, I would say average probably a few weeks. Cool. And Zach Nisselroy says, what would you tell a new user regarding the key differentiators between Vela and the extensive list of competitors in the market? For me, the UI is definitely top three out there, but is there anything else? Yeah, I would say it's the overall experience. Like, everything ranging from the richness of the tools all the way to how we support the vault and make sure that you're protected um, to the automation capabilities. It kind of wraps everything together. Like what I wrote is my true belief, like we're getting at a time where there's like a hundred perps dexes, right? On every chain. And really everybody's learning from each other and building, you know, similar things at this point. So my suggestion is like trade on multiple perp dexes, like get a feel for it, do a little bit at a time. And then once you find one that just gels with you, like go with it. And I really do believe ours is one of the smoothest experiences. Um, you're also going to have to look at like open interest caps, like how they manage fees. Um, so it, it really is like a trial and error thing. But I, I find that, you know, when I try to trade on other perp dexes now, it's like really hard. Like I'm like, oh man, this is just like it's slow or it's like the tools aren't there. Um, I still trade on GMX sometimes, especially if like our OI is capped and like, I get frustrated in the, even about the ability to see my historical trades. I have to like go through like these weird like lists of like take profit and stuff. And it sends me to a smart contract until instead of just telling me like, what was my trade and how did I perform so I can learn from it, right? So uh, we look at a lot of things though, like how do you manage unutilized OI? Um, what is the method that you manage insurance? How do you hedge for your VL or LP vault? Um, how flexible can you list assets? What kind of triggers do you have? Like what's the overall experience? And like across the board, like I would say we're four to five stars across those. So um, yeah, so differentiation by being a better glue and a better experience between everything. And uh, ultimately that just makes it easier for you to trade, right? I think one thing I'll add to that is even before I was like working with Vela, I could always go to the Discord and like be like, hey, <laughs> we should consider changing this or adding this. I've seen other people do the same. And then like a couple weeks later, like a feature would be there. And you just can't do that with a project like GMX, um, frankly. And, you know, I, one of my like biggest things is working with people who, who like to move quickly because like, as we know in crypto, like things, things move on a dime and a lot of what Dan talked about as far as like efficiency with VLP, like that's huge for me because now let's say like right now we're looking at open interest, right? And this is sold, this is just one asset. Like the open interest on both sides is like cap is like near a million dollars and we're only utilizing a small fraction of that. So what if like VLP on a whole is like 10 mil, but only three mil is being actively used. You could probably safely farm with the other three mil in some whitelisted strategies and then further boost the VLP yield. I don't know of any other perp stacks that's doing that right now. Um, and I, yeah, like I'm not going to spoil <laughs> the fun that's going to probably come down the line, but we know a lot of strategists who have a lot of experience with this type of farming, whether it's like concentrated liquidity management whether it's lending platforms there are a lot of opportunities to generate pretty solid yields in DeFi right now that are well above 10 percent 
So that number that you see for VLP yields could could go higher. Um, and then the other thing that I'll mention is there is a project called Vaultka, um, and I think they're probably capped at this point because they're typically always capped, but you can I actually, I've never, let's see, where is it? Uh, you can come down to VLP and you can actually leverage it. Um, so I think you can also mint it directly from here if I'm not mistaken. Is that right, Dan? Yep. So you would basically deposit here and then just select what your... Um, what your leverage is and because it's a stable vault um you know it your your liquidation price like once i actually put a number in here like if if the vault goes below 1.01 at some point i would get liquidated but you can basically turn the apr into a monstrosity if if you're willing to take that level of risk i mean even if you're only 5xing it like vlp has never gone this low before um so it's another thing to consider. Um, we're actively talking to a couple other projects uh, that could also potentially create vaults for us. So I don't know. I think one other thing that is exciting is that we have like builders allocations and we can kind of like provide incentives for other teams to build on top of Ella. So uh, lots of fun new features to come in the in the near future, I think. Yeah, what, one last call out for an opportunity that will probably go live tomorrow or monday is we're coming out with the idea of locked blp so we have like a pretty large sum of arbitrum tokens that were given to us for liquidity um we were working on locked blp for several months but needed to go through the right security procedures internal audits external audits stuff like that to make sure it's safe uh, but essentially the ability to put your vlp in a staked vault for six months and then you would get your Arbitrum tokens immediately. So I think the conversion rate that we're allowing is one R per $10 of VLP. So if you do the math on that over six months, pretty nice. Um, of course, it depends on, you know, Arbitrum holding its weight and, you know, perhaps increasing, but um, that'll likely go live soon. And it's a limited vault, right? Like it's only going to have so much that you can put in in order to claim that um, amount. So we'll be releasing that very soon and uh, you guys can, you know, jump in if you're a LP -er. And the Discord and Twitter are, are probably good places to catch that, but we can also make sure that we come back in here and, and announce these things as they're happening. Um, intuitive, intuitive Investor says, what does the reporting look like for trade history and can it be exported? Yeah, that's been something I've been asking for even like, it's such a cool feature for learning, for taxes, for all sorts of things. Um, it's been in the backlog for way too long because of things like the Grand Prix. So I think we'll definitely have it closer to V2. Um, but it's been a very popular thing that's been requested. It's just, it's just been taking a backseat given like the amount of work and engineers we have. Um, but yeah, back to like our product ethos. Um, you know, I, I have to spend a lot of time being strategic right now, like making sure we're building like way ahead of like narratives and like future proofing the platform. But my favorite thing to do is like jump into a call and like go through Figma, like get your customer voice, understand what you want. So if you guys ever have like questions or like suggestions, like ping me, DM me. Um, we'll set up time. We'll set up time. And I'd love to hear from our users. So. Yeah. And that feed feedback loop is tight, it, but but it's also funny to to see Avi just degen and out right now. Are you? So You're scared? actually positive right now, guys. <laughs> guys, we're winning. Don't don't jinx it. <clears throat> this is a great time to ask Steven's question, which is win Avi Arena Strat. <laughs> yeah, I need to I need to fucking survive the next two months. Take my board exam. Your then... PNL is like so <laughs> sus right now. It's like it just yeah. went from four percent to zero. Yeah, you know it's okay. This is the life of a DJ. This is what happens. We we win money and then we give it all back. And uh, Solana, ultimately... Solana is crazy. It's like the scammiest it's... coin I've ever <laughs> traded. Like it scares me. You can make so much money on it and lose money right. so fast and that's Solana is, the, token. is the one the one minute crackhead token where where fortunes are are made and lost in, in thirty seconds. Yeah. 
Surprisingly, my Solana bot is the most successful uh, as far as PNL goes right now. So, uh, is that just because bots? Are, your bot strategy is based on volatility. No, no, no it's, it's not, not on volatility, volatility at all. Uh, um, it's, it's just very patient with Solana. Solana. Like it, it doesn't, doesn't, it doesn't trade a lot, but when it does, it it's usually knocks it out of the park. That's awesome. Yeah. It's like the right. most illogical coin. Like I'll, I'll literally like FTX will dump right, and you're like, well, the FTX like uh, assets are unlocked and they're gonna sell in the market and it goes up somehow. You're like. This is just unreasonable. Yeah. yeah. All, All right. right. So, uh, is there any other questions that we missed? The one from Intuitive Investor is: After five rounds, is the Grand Prix over, or are there more seasons? Dan, do you want to kind of talk about the extended release of Grand Prix? Yeah. So the current Grand Prix season runs until the end of March. Um, we are highly debating having a follow-up season very soon after um so that's tbd but uh we think it's the pilot and season one has essentially proved itself um so i'd say i put i'd say it's 60 percent right now i can't tell you like 80 percent or 90 percent, but um it's a reusable framework right um our purpose was to make it something that you know sdip fueled it but it's really to make sure that we test the thesis that gamified trading is exciting for users. Um, so something that we're considering. Cool. And I think the last one that I say is, that I see here is, did you say all the bonsai bots can be moved over to Vela? Yeah, yeah, so, so I, I think, think that, that they, they all are, and for some reason, reason as uh, someone else said too, too Link is not is, is not, not working well with Vela, and I think you guys are working on that. There, there's like a few bugs that we're trying to like figure out with the Astrobit team, so they're keeping us in the loop. Uh, I did not know about Link, but um, I'm sure the team that's like working. Uh, on the Astrobit side is figuring it out with us. All right, well, I'm gonna need you to figure that out, all right? <laughs> ASAP, let me let me just call Nick right now, wake him up. I was gonna say, Lorem asked um, about getting the referral code for Dojo. So the referral code will be posted. Um, I think uh, Steven posted it. I'll make sure it gets posted again. Uh, but Dan is actually working on getting um things updated in the ui so that if you started with a different referral code for a given wallet you would be able to change your referral code um so that, that's that works. was how it worked by the way we actually had to disable it temporarily because of the grand prix essentially there was an infinite loop of credits if you referred each other <laughs> on the 10 percent oh. referrals so we're actually adjusting the code so that that doesn't happen in the grand prix nice, nice. yeah some clever bastard would have found out that that's how it worked fast. <laughs> yeah. So I think that was pretty much, there's one more question by Nemja. He's asking if Vela is hiring. Um, so we, we kind know, of are. Dan, you want to talk to that? Yeah. We, we kind of are. Um, we, I could definitely foresee need for technical talent, design talent, um, even kind of community roles. So, DM me after if you're interested. Um, I don't know how full time it would be yet, but the full time opportunities are probably coming soon. Um, and that'll you guys will see why because like V two is like awesome and I'm super excited about it. But V three or whatever is coming after the big vision is like it's it's something pretty insane and we'll definitely need firepower. So uh, DM me after and we can talk. I think that's a great place to end it.